Seamus Heaney remarked that the autograph tree at Cool, a magnificent mature copper beech, was the most celebratory monument in Ireland acknowledging the literary renaissance which flowered on this estate in the closing years of the 19th century. Carved into its bark, although faded with passing time, are the names of some of those who came and worked here, including the flamboyant George Bernard Shaw, J.M. Singh, Augustus John, on Creeving Even, Douglas Hyde, A.E. George Russell, W.B. Yeats, Sean O'Casey, as well as those of Augusta Lady Gregory herself and her son Robert. Lady Gregory had a genius for inspiration. Yeats described her as a woman of powerful character, though he was not the only one who felt its full weight. He first met her in the summer of 1897 when he longed for peace to think and write. He describes his first arrival to the small Georgian mansion up its long avenue past woods and lakes, the most beautiful place in the world. Later he explored paths through woods leading to a mysterious lake, a great walled garden set with classical statuary and rare trees. Yeats felt he had found a sanctuary. Lady Gregory enjoyed a similar sense of discovery after her husband, Sir William Gregory, died. Although she was brought up in a large house at Roxburgh, one of nine lively children, she found cool, civilised and ordered. Strictly brought up a Protestant, with a strong landlord bias, she enjoyed meeting her tenants, listening to their stories, visiting the Gort workhouse, learning Irish and collecting folklore which filled her notebooks. Her finger was on the great pulse of change then breaking out in Ireland. She wrote, This discovery, this disclosure of the folk learning, the folk poetry, the ancient tradition, was the small beginning of a weighty change. It was the upsetting of the table of values, an astonishing excitement. The deaths in World War I of her only child, Robert, who was a pilot in the Royal Flying Corps, inspired Yeats's famous poem, An Irish Airman Foresees His Death. Due to financial constraints, Lady Gregory sold the house at Cool to the Irish state in 1927, but retained a life tenancy. After her death in 1932, the house fell into disrepair and sadly was eventually demolished. Yeats had foreseen its demise. Here, traveller, scholar, poet, take your stand. When all these rooms and passages are gone, when nettles wave upon a shapeless mound, and saplings root among the broken stone, and dedicate, eyes bent upon the ground, back turned upon the brightness of the shade, a moment's memory to that laureled head. <laughs> <laughs>